All right, so uh, I do get questions about how I'm able to get licks in while I'm playing. And more than anything, it's just experience playing a lot. But basically what I'm doing is I'm still, when I go to a lick and I'm playing the blues, I'm still in the back of my mind hearing that jam track or the backing track of that blues I was playing. So I'm just, you know, sometimes I'm playing a little bit of the actual blues, sometimes I'm playing some leads that I would be doing over that blues and mixing them up in a way where it kind of sounds like it's all flowing together. An example would be something like this. So I can still hear where that should have been. So I know where to pick it up when I go back. I hope, well, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but so what I want to do is, you know, in the E blues, really we emphasize the E blues, the open E blues scale. And hopefully you already know it. It's been covered in, you know, my other blues series. And I'm hoping that most of you already have that. Um, but I'm going to show you some, some cool licks. Um, basically, my favorite, you know, thing is, you know, I use my ring finger on the third fret of the high E. And I just nudge it. I don't... See that? That's out of tune. We don't do that. It's just a little, a little nuance, a little motivation. Okay? So I like to do that. And after I do that, I'm going to hit that open E. Then third fret on the B. Then third fret on the G with my ring finger. Then middle finger on the, you know, second fret of the G. Like... I've practiced a ton with my alternate picking. If you want to practice the blue scale up and down with alternate picking, so um, I really recommend that. But so we got. And anytime you're on with the middle finger on the second fret of the G, little slides up and down. You never want to emphasize that third fret. It's always coming back down to the second fret. And anytime you do that with your pick, you can hit the high E and the B string as you do that. Check it out. Now you can also skip your ring finger on uh, that third fret G and just immediately slide it up and back like this. Depending on how it's fitting in the groove. So I'd, I'd recommend you trying something like this. So there's always variations with how to fit it into the groove. So I did a bunch of variations that time, but one good one. So I went third fret on the high E, then open high E, then ring finger on the third fret of the B. Then instead of playing the open B, I went straight to middle finger on the second fret of the G, played all the top three strings, slid it up and back. Check it out. So watch out. And you can hit the open G if you want, or you can hit the third fret on the low E on that one. Check it out. time just that third fret so these are all tiny little elements that you can that you can add and they're all just basically licks in uh, that E blues and it takes a lot of experimenting but hopefully you kind of get the idea of what's going on there then it's amazing because you could do um, that lick into that land of a7 and you can also use the land of e7 mixed with the licks so the more of those little 
weapons of your arsenal that you're adding, the you know the more choices you have and the more you know sophisticated you can you can make it sound. So let's do that again. So that time, I did the lick I showed you. Then I just went down the blue scale and triplets, which we're gonna talk about later. Triple, 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 triple. Until in the back of my head, like I said, or in the back of my crazy mind, hearing that backing track still and going, okay, it's gonna be a really good time. Obviously it's instantaneous or instinctual, but in the back of my mind, okay, when it switches to that land of A7, I'm gonna to go to the land of A7 instead of playing licks anymore. So watch that again. track when you're doing the licks. Now I like So that's our first little uh, journey into a fill. Um, I want you to get that concept and then later on in the series I'm going to give you a bunch of cool licks and you can always add those um, as little fills. But the real idea is to constantly hear that backing track in your head. You know it, the blues so well in your head that you can solo over that thing that's not existing and then ease back into the chords and mix and match. That's the idea of it really. So we had... And then also just amazingly, uh, I would practice this as much as you can, is that E blue scale in triplets. So we got zero, three, O, one, two, O, two, O, two, three, O, three, O, three, and vice versa. When I say practice in triplets, I mean, if you have counts, one, two, three, four, you're gonna play three notes per beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Triple, uh, triple, uh, triple, uh, triple. Uh. You gotta say it to get it in your head, but you gotta do it over and over and over. Triple, uh, triple, uh, triple, uh, triple, uh, triple, uh, triple. Never ending. No. Like it's a circle. Get your alternate picking. Little elements of it. Triple up. So now I'm just going to do some of those little fills like I was teaching you um, so you can soak it in a little more and then I want you to go and practice it a bit and see, see what kind of things you can come up with. It's not going to happen overnight but keep plugging away and also keep kind of studying how I was doing it and I think you'll, you'll make some strides, okay?
10 minutes a day, keep doing it. Go super slow, all right? See you in the next module.